Hi, I'm Tony Mesa with Tony Mesa Real Estate School. Um, so uh, I'm going to show you a memory aid for remembering how to calculate the tax on the deed, the tax on the mortgage, and the tax on the note. Uh, in Florida, we have one time at the closing, this is not your yearly property taxes, we have one time at the closing a tax on the document called the deed. This is the document that transfers the ownership of the property. We have one time a tax on the document called the mortgage. The mortgage is the document that, tr that gives the lender a right to go after your property if you default on that loan. And then we have a one-time tax at the closing on the document called the promissory note. This is the document that you give to a lender promising to pay back this debt, personally obligating yourself for this, for this debt, okay? Uh, the memory aid is taxes are a sin, S-I-N, right? So taxes are a sin, S-I-N. You've got the state documentary stamp tax on the deed. This is a tax on the document called the deed. So the deed, think about it, transfers the entire property. So when we're calculating the tax of the deed, we use the sales price, right? Uh, then we have the intangible tax on the mortgage. So this is a tax on the document called the mortgage. Think about it. Uh, the mortgage is a document that you use to pledge the property as collateral to the lender. So the lender has lien rights in Florida against your property. They can go after that property if there's a default. It's what allows a lender to actually foreclose against your property if you don't pay or if you otherwise default. The mortgage is a document that has to do with the loan. So when you're calculating the tax on the mortgage, you're going to use the loan amount, right? And then you have the note stamp tax. The promissory note, uh, and I call it the note here instead of the promissory note, because taxes are a sip is not a good memory aid. Taxes are a sin is a good memory aid. And I give you a lot of memory aids throughout the course, right? So what happens is the note, the promissory note, is the document where you personally obligate yourself to pay the debt. It has to do with the loan, so you use the loan amount to calculate the tax on the note. So understand what's going on. There's a piece of paper called the deed. There's a tax on it. The deed transfers the entire property. It makes sense that you use the sales price to calculate the tax on the deed. The mortgage and the note are two documents that have to do with the loan amount. What happens is it makes sense that you would use the loan amount to calculate these two taxes, right? Now, all closing costs are negotiable. You can always contractually change around who pays for what, but notice S, S, seller. Normally the seller pays the tax on the deed. And then IN, who moves in? The buyer. Normally the buyer pays the intangible tax and the mortgage and the note stamp tax. All right, now how do you calculate the state documentary stamp tax and the deed? It is a tax of 70 cents on every hundred dollars or part of a hundred dollars. So what happens is for every hundred dollars of sales price or fractional part of a hundred dollars, you're gonna pay a tax of 70 cents. We're gonna come back to that in a minute. Uh, and then the intangible tax on the mortgage, you're using the loan amount, multiplied by 0 .002. And then the note stamp tax, it is a tax of 35 cents on every $100, or part of $100, right? So here's uh, an example, right? I'm gonna erase this, and I'm taking the state exam, and I get a question where they're asking me, maybe to calculate the total taxes due uh, if the property is sold for, I'm making up a weird number here, $110,40, right? So $110,040, that's the sales price. And let's say there's a loan of $90,000, right? Well, I'm gonna use my memory aid, taxes are a sin, right? When I go to calculate the tax on the deed, I know I'm going to use the sales price of 11040. Now what happens is the tax on the deed is 70 cents on every hundred dollars or part of a hundred dollars. Um, if I draw a line between the tens and the hundreds, I have here 1,100 one hundred dollar parts. If I have anything here that is not zero zero, it could be a one, a 32, a 58, it doesn't matter. If it's not zero, zero, that's a fractional part of $100, and I need to add it to the other side. So I wind up getting $1,101 $100 parts, right? 
If it ends with zero, zero, it's just the number on the left. That's how many hundred dollar parts you have. But if it doesn't end with zero, zero, that's a fractional part of hundred dollars. And the way that the tax on the deed is, and also the note stamp tax, which we'll get to in a second, uh, it's a tax on every hundred dollars or part of a hundred dollars. So here, if I take, I use my calculator, right? Even if uh, I'm good at doing math in my head, I'm gonna use my calculator. And I take 1,100 and multiply it by 70 cents, I get, so times 0 0.70, I get $770.70. That is the tax on the deed, right? Now, when I go to calculate both the intangible tax on the mortgage, the I in taxes or sin, and the note stamp tax, I'm gonna use the loan amount, because the mortgage and the note are both uh, documents that have to do with the loan. The intangible tax on the mortgage, this one, I just take the $90,000 loan amount and I multiply it by 0 .002, right? You don't have to draw a line with that one. It's just whatever the loan amount is times 0 .002. So 90,000 times 0 .002 gives us $180. That's going to be the intangible tax on the mortgage. When I go to calculate the no stamp tax, again, this one here, again, what happens is um, it's a tax on the note, the promissory note, which transfers the property, I use the loan amount. It is a tax where you pay a tax 35 cents on every hundred dollars or part of a hundred dollars. I draw my line between the tens and the hundreds. This one ends with zero, zero. So that means you have exactly $900 parts in there, 900, $100 parts in there. Again, if it did not end with zero, zero, anything, a two, a 22, a 38, you would add a one to this side and make it 901. But here it ends with zero, zero, so you have exactly 900, $100 parts. So 900 multiplied by 0.35 gives us $315 as the note stamp tax. With math problems in the state exam, be very careful, because what they will sometimes do is give you more information than you need. So for example, on the state exam, if they ask you to calculate the total taxes due, what you would do is you would take this $770.70, right? Plus the $180 plus the $315 and get the total. But they might give you all this information and then the question at the end is how much is the tax on the deed? That would be just, that would be the answer, $770.70. Don't go on autopilot and just uh, you know, do a bunch of calculations you don't need to do. Incorrect answer choices on the state exam will sometimes be numbers that will match if you're looking for the wrong thing, right? So always identify clearly in the question what they're asking you for. I hope that memory aid helps you uh, when you're taking your state exam. Um, it is one of memory, many memory aids that I teach in the course. Um, for those of you that would like to reach the school, we are www.tony, T-O-N-Y, Mesa, M-E-S-A, uh, Real Estate School.com. Okay, all one word. Tony Mesa, Real Estate School.com. Thank you and have a great day. Bye-bye.